One of the things that I did as a child, uh, I was a voracious historical reader, for, and especially statistics, etc. I mean, Christy Mathewson and Walter Johnson and Carl Hubble and Babe Ruth and you know every 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 so-called name player, and Ralph was one of them. And his the thing I remember, I said, you know, the number, you know, his power numbers were were phenomenal. I didn't know Ralph as a as a baseball player. But from what I understand, from what I've read, uh, and from what uh, guys like Duke Snyder uh, told me, was that uh, when Ralph Kiner was still eligible to come up in the nine-inning game, regardless of where the Pittsburgh Pirates were at the time, people stayed in the stands to wait to see him hit. The thing that I remember most about Ralph Kiner was not how far he hit the ball, but how high he hit the ball and how far. And not just in old Greenberg Gardens in Forbes Field, uh, which I remember very well, but uh, one of the things in Forbes Field uh, in those early days, they would clean out the blast furnaces in the uh, various places in Pittsburgh, and there would be a haze that would move into the ballpark around 9 o'clock. And we sat way up high, sometimes even on the roof of the ladies' room, believe it or not. And you would be looking down through a haze, and Ralph had come up and hit a home run. But it wasn't just a home run. It would come up through the haze and go back down through the haze and clear the fence in left field. So he was, uh, he was a marvelous hitter, and a tribute to him in Pittsburgh when they were home, and uh, they would wait for Ralph Kiner to come to the plate. And most of the time, when Ralph kind of did whatever he did at that at bat, the whole ballpark, it seemed, would get up and go home and say, okay, we won't see Ralph again, so we're good. Ralph Kiner, 50 Amazing Years, Thursday at 7, only on SNY.